says we're going live. And we're live. Hi, and welcome to the Stop It Zombie. I'm Amy, also known as Jane Itma. And I'm Megan, also known as Just Run It. And this is episode 358. 358. Awesome. And no bed with craft projects on it behind Amy today. <laughs> Right. Um, I got kicked out of my house because we are putting in new windows. And so there's a lot of construction at my house this week. Uh, so even if I could work from home, be really loud. Um, and then you guys would hear all the banging and whatnot. Right now, there's only danger of you hearing the hallway chatter where people are discussing what they want to have for lunch. So... <laughs> <laughs> Hello, hello, Claire and Lisa say hello. Um, did you have a good spring break? Um, I mean, I worked a lot of it, so um, I kind of regret not taking time off or more time off. I took a long weekend, but I didn't take the whole week. So one of these days it'd be nice to actually get through and do the whole thing. But, oh, well. yeah. yeah. June, we had, I have lots we had a... of plans in June. Tons yeah. of plans in June. Uh, I'm also going to go on the shop hop this Friday. So the Minnesota shop hop, I'm excited for that. Um, I have, I want to get another set of those cables. Mm. Like I'm using a really long one in my project right now because oh, it's the only one yeah. left. <laughs> and I'd rather have some smaller ones for the sleeves. <clears throat> but um, yeah, sorry, frog in my throat. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah, we had a we had a great time in Costa Rica. Um, it was because of like plane times and whatever. It was very like both of the the plane ride there and the plane ride back were both very early morning flights. Um, so with international travel, you have to get there like two hours in advance, and then they were like five o'clock and six o'clock in the morning, respectively. Mm. <laughs> so very early morning slash late night. <laughs> Um, and then a full day of travel, but but well worth it. Um, it was very, very nice. They're very sunny. Like, so again, we come, I've come back to very overcast weather where it was like, oh yeah, it was really sunny there. Um, and again, I don't think I'll ever complain about um, it being hot in Minnesota unless it's like super hot. <laughs> I mean, knock on wood, right? We might get temperatures like that, but it was super muggy. And then like, if you looked at their 10 day forecast before we went and the 10 day, for day forecast after we went, it's like 90, 91, 92, 90, 91, 92. It was like always that. And like where here overnight, it cools down, right? Like once the rays of the sun are no longer warming the air, it gets down into the seventies sometimes at night. Um, there it was like 80s and it almost was worse at night because it was a little more humid. I don't know if the um, like the sun kind of baked off some of the moisture, in here. <laughs> but like you'd shower after a long day of spending a lot of time sweating and whatever in the sun and then you'd walk out of the um, our resort room and it would just be like a wave of moisture like my hair would just go. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we figured out that our pasty Minnesotan-ness um, was not, it was not good to be out from 10 to 2. Um, wish we had figured that out before we spent a full, like one of the first days, a full first day out in the sun. No matter how much sunscreen we put on, we all, except Jeremy, who did not get into the pool and kind of sat in the shade, we all have like peeling shoulders and um, just talking about it. <laughs> Itchy. Um, I wasn't really peely until I came back here. So I don't know, again, if some of that humidity mm. was keeping my skin nice and moist. So it wasn't peeling, but now I'm all itchy and um, peely, but took a few days to recover from all of the, um, all of the sun and figuring out, okay, 10 to 2, do not go outside. UV range is danger, danger. No amount of sunscreen you put on your skin is going to keep you from from roasting um and then we did we saw some crocodiles we saw some monkeys um really fun uh like they they live in like these mango trees but they like bananas 
apparently those are the um, the delicacy to these monkeys. And we went to their home. Like it wasn't like they brought the monkeys to us. It was like we went to their home and they live in these mango trees and the kids did it. I didn't do it. Um, so we got some interesting photos, but they took a banana and you could like go like this and create like a land bridge across yourself and the monkeys would walk across and over your head and go over to the other hand and get the little piece of banana. And then one just kind of like treated Quentin like a papazon. <laughs> <laughs> just kind of like hung out on his head like this is cool keep giving me bananas i'll stick around um saw some crocodiles did some horseback riding um jumped into a waterfall which was super fun and i think the kids' favorite by far was zip lining so mm. lots of lots of fun with with zip lining um and then the highest anxiety thing for me was the um getting the covid test to get back into the united states so um, had to do that 24 hours before we came back and found a place. And and um, Jeremy had kind of lined it up that the hotel had a shuttle mm. to the airport. Little It was like a little tent that they, like a huge, expansive, like circus tent um, that mm. they had set up. Um, and we all went and, and got tested and got our little certificates to be able to come back. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, it was great. It was great. Uh, it's cold and it's dark here. Yeah. <laughs> and you very nicely, Schadenfreude, uh, gave me like, it snowed here on Thursday night. <laughs> yeah. I think it was Wednesday, but yeah, it it yeah. snowed and and uh, we woke up to Wednesday's uh, ground cover. Uh, mm -hmm. So And it stuck around a little while, like it didn't go away completely. Yeah. Um, and it's funny because I, you know, yesterday seemed brilliant. Like I loved yesterday. So like, it's just so funny to me. <laughs> like it's not dark and cold to me. <laughs> well, again, like 30s and 40s is pretty cold for this time of year here. Like mm -hmm. it, it would be nice if we could be in the 50s or 60s. Where's where's spring? Spring, where are you? Um, but, yeah, with my yeah. birthday being in April, um, it gets like... I know the feeling, right? It should be warmer, but it's never as warm as you think it should be by the time my birthday rolls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> true that, true that. I am, I am again, very cognizant of the January cold um, because that is the, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I get it, I get it. Yes. Um, all right, well, we did have a little bit of administrati. So the March self-striping has come and uh, gone. So people, wonderful uh, posts, love to seeing all of them, have an interesting mix of, um, again, all of them are eligible, but uh, drew three prizes. Um, we have a 716 fingering that we showed off at another, um, at another podcast that, um, that Amy uh, has at her home, but is not at the office. She does not take her 716 on the road with her. <laughs> no. Yeah, I was I was pretty impressed. I made it out with a tripod and uh, two whip or FOs for today and a whip. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and then I have this. So I was part of the Vesper Sock Yarn Club. Um, this is actually May of 2020, but it burst of bloom. Um, so there's a um, coordinating. I kind of think of this as the April showers when these are the May flowers. Um, so super pretty pops of pink and some purples, um, kind of like a darker maroon in there that's reading as um, a little more black on the on the camera. Um, and then that super exclusive self-striping logo um, item, whether it's a water bottle or a shirt um, or uh, what else? What else do we have in there? Water bottle or shirt is pretty. Um, or pretty standard fare. So I drew three prizes and the winners were out on Discord were not Paltrow, which is Gwyneth, um, Memphis Holly, which is Holly, and Shayna Lines. Um, Shayna had some catch up with some self-striping cowls that she's been doing. And I believe Memphis Holly had a beautiful pair of socks. And I think Gwyneth's were some February socks. Um, mm -hmm. So 
congratulations to you three. If you could contact me, I can get Amy the information. Um, again, get me, let me know your, um, your preference uh, in order of logo, um, the best for self-striping or the 716 self-striping, uh, and then also your address because all of these, those things will be coming to you. <laughs> Yeah, or will awesome. need to be coming to you. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I'm loving the self-striping. It's definitely, um, Craft Along, it's definitely keeping me motivated. I took self-striping along with me to Costa Rica. Um, mm -hmm. are, are you keeping up? No. <laughs> I mean, I have two done. Yeah. Two, two. Um, so I'm not that far behind. So I, if I could work two in this month, but I think I agreed to too many frenemies. So uh -huh. in order to get my bonus points for the month, I have a lot of sweaters to complete. <laughs> that happens. That happens. I've been amazed at the numbers that I've seen um, like Cindy taking on. <laughs> like, whoa, go Cindy. <laughs> exactly. And so um, maybe in May I can try to catch up by, you know, I know what our next thing is. So I don't think that I'll participate and so I can just blissfully just go about my my merry way working on my little self stripey item. And everybody has that option every month, right? Well, yeah, yeah, it's very true. <laughs> That's very true. Just uh, know what um, you want. Enter the yard. Everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but congratulations to our self striping folks. Um, here in April, we're wrapping up our brioche along. I did not get mine cast on um, because April first came around, and I had brought. So I brought two sweaters or tops worth of yarn with me to Costa Rica. Like, why did I do that? Um, but it gave me the opportunity for to cast on on April 1st, which is what me and my friend of me had agreed upon. Um, so that that's fun. But I need to get the brioche project on. Um, and you'll see in my FOs that I'm um, up to date on my self-striping. So uh, I, I asked only because not because I wanted to put you on the spot, but I was like, at one point you were like, I am really going to do this self strike. <laughs> well, again, like in March, yeah. these are, it's an April thing, but it's counting our March FOs. So yeah. I have two enter or entered, not really, um, mm -hmm. by March. So, I mean, it's just that I never got something kicked off for yeah March it is fun while you're stirring the stash right you're like oh yeah I've got all this I want to do this one I saw my um woolens and nosh, nosh sushi yarn I was oh I want to put that and the cornucopia the one that I also got you from woolens and nosh has been kind of like knit me knit me mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah I pulled I pulled something for um something to do color work mm. and then I was thinking um, the other one might go in to just a pair of socks or something mm. but yeah I I pulled some things for the neck you know to be up to April mm -hmm. <laughs> they're just not getting worked on <laughs> well you could also do the brioche along with the striping double double we're all about the um, the um, double dipping, as it were. So, um, one of my frenemies is brioche. <laughs> ooh, okay, there you go. There you go. You do you. Um, what else do we have as far as administrati? Um, we were talking to Anna of uh, Mochi Mochi Land. So excited! She's such a, a brilliant um, artist. Not only with um, her little knitting um fun figures but also um visual artists right like she's doing a lot of videos now um it was super fun to be able to post in her instagram stories um an actual little um gif of like one of her figures like doing the knitting things right i'm like this is actually her thing like i've used this before but it's not <laughs> it wasn't for actually getting to talk to her so um, and she is lovely and charming and it will be fabulous. Um, in addition to kind of introducing herself and our interview style, she is um, going to be chatting a little bit about her tips and tricks for kind of some of those small fiddly bits. Um, mm -hmm. So definitely excited. Um, that's this weekend, uh, Saturday. 
um, the 9th at, uh, at 1 p.m. Central Daylight um, Time. So. <laughs> Yeah, um, I was just thinking about um, she had that uh, inflation. Um, did you see that? Mm. She had a little ex explanatory videos about inflation, like hmm. prices going up. Oh, or something like that. It was it was in conjunction with a magazine. It was oh, in her fun. newsletter. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. I went out and looked at her portfolio, um, and she's done things for Martha Stewart and Nickelodeon like it's just so much fun she's just such a a brilliant artist um I think the the thing that I'm closest to casting on of hers is the the like if I if I fit I fit the little cat in the box yeah. <laughs> so cute so cute um yeah but yeah we should I think we should try and get a link out there or it's in her newsletter so I'm sure it's on her website too um it's a really cute it's like a live action infographic, you know, because <laughs> there's this little story on the side and it goes right along with, you know, the video that she made huh. and it's explaining inflation. It's cute. Huh. Yeah. Kids need to, kids need to understand that. Eyes for adults. <laughs> okay. Adults too. Kids like, I mean, at heart. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure both could absorb the information, but um, yeah, it was fun. Anyway, I don't have anything else, really. Um, we're working um, diligently on the retreat. Uh, mm -hmm. I have some uh, feedback for the yarns that are going to be included in the goodie bag, so that's exciting. Um, I don't get to share that with you, but um, I do have some of it and get to look at it. Super excited about the bag this year as well. Yes, Again, the bag is going to be really tell you good. anything about it, but super excited. Right. <laughs> right. And then just working on the other um, details. Uh, yep. Like we probably will be getting the um, shirt design out to spread shirt uh, shortly. Yep. Uh, probably uh, I'm going to put Megan on the spot here. To, in order to put it with um, announcing what we're going to be KLing for um, uh, May and June, so. Yep. Yep. Nope. It, it it's it's going to be there. I'm I'm excited to get it um, to get the shirts. So right. I feel like that's kind of part of it feeling real is that yep. when the shirts arrive and you're like, okay, <laughs> yep. June is soon because I've got one of the days worth of wardrobe that I'm. <laughs> here um yep. in addition to yarn over at the end of the month that always kind of feels real after yarn over um mm -hmm. and shepherd's harvest at least for me so um but yes. yeah lots lots going on there not a lot fit to tell here <laughs> right exactly so, so yep um, um i only have two fo's so i might as okay. well share and you've already seen a lot of them before but um just more of an up close. So this yarn is Lavender Loon in the Alice colorway. And you might be able to see that there's some sparkle in there. It's mm -hmm. the one with the bronze um, speck or sparkle in it. And then um, the other one is a schlub yarn by Muse um, 23 or yeah, 2320. Yep. And then um, it is my trough. So I got my fingering weight troughs done in time Beautiful. to start a lot of my frenemy projects. And um, I, I haven't worked lighting hard good there. Again, I don't know that I've seen that, but I think I've seen that gray before. And I think the your color is true. Yes, I think the colors here at um, in this lighting situation are very true to form. Mm -hmm. So you finally get to see it, how it would look in life. Um, mm -hmm. It's beautiful. And, yeah, and this is kind of my favorite styling option where it's the points are on the shoulders, you know, going down mm -hmm. the shoulders. And then, um, you know, then you're going to have this biased front. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's real yeah, long. Unlike mine where I used the, um, the hand spun for kind of the garter section, 
Um, I really like that your color pop is in those sections that are bigger. Yeah. Like the more interesting, like the color changing, I guess, piece. Yep. And it's textured too. So um, I, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. and it's really long. Um, I think when it's on and I'm standing, it goes down to my hip. Mm. Uh, the one side does. So, you know, wearing it in the front, it, it's almost too long. <laughs> yeah. I think that's my favorite way when I'm wearing mine as well. Mine isn't quite as long as yours. I don't know if that's like the slub or maybe just some gauge differences or maybe even blocking. Um, but yeah, I did block it. Um, not too generously, but yeah, to get the slub to kind of do its thing, right? Because as you're knitting with it, it kind of catches on itself. Mm -hmm. And then in the blocking, it kind of evens itself out. Yeah. So mine was long enough that I do remember while I was wearing it, like going to the bathroom and being like, this is kind of like a bridal moment. I want to make sure that it's not. <laughs> you have to take this little extra bit and throw it over your shoulder. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. Um, and then my other project, um, and again, you've seen one of them because I was already working on them. Mm -hmm. Pretty. I love them. They're so happy. Yeah. So the um, stripes is 716 knit and um, it's the super brilliant pink and blue and then paired with a white. And this is um, from Telly Bean's uh, self-striping book. And yeah, I really like them. They turned out great. I yeah. will say that they were, I made a mistake, right? And I, this, this part I took out the stripe in between you can kind of see there it's missing but when I uh, tried them on I preferred the shorter oh. so I ripped back to correct the longer one so that they were both shorter for me oh. so cute yeah yeah and you can see how really bright it is when you look at the cuff right yeah it's not muted by the white <laughs> Yeah, and I and I have enough leftover yarn. I could probably make a, some shorties. Definitely make a lot of more mittens, but um, mm -hmm. maybe make some shorties. They're so pretty and oh. fun. And that's it. That's my two. I I swear I should have more, but I've been working four sweaters at once, so I have a feeling that it'll be one of those like, yeah, I'm next month. I'm gonna have so many. People are going to be like, did you do anything in April but knit sweaters? <laughs> exactly. I'm going to have lots of sweaters. Yes. Yeah. Preview. Um, I have two sweaters. Oh, your wave of change is pretty. It's getting close to being done. It might skip the whips episode. Mm, yep. Mine, uh, my summer top, one of my two summer tops might skip the whip episode too. <laughs> we shall see. We shall see. Um, so I cast on my um, Dobayaski, which is inspired by, so it's kind of like a double. So it's inspired by the Don't Look Up sweater that Jennifer Lawrence is wearing in the Netflix movie, which is then really from Target. <laughs> so wardrobe in the Don't Look Up movie got it from Target. Um, I really enjoy that I've now knit a Target sweater um, with my own colors and what and whatnot. So it's kind of like a not only is it cool to me that I've got a sweater that was worn in a movie, but also like a, a Target sweater. <laughs> but I made it my own, right? So um, this is the blue that I got at Rhinebeck from Utopia. Um, I went out to look. It's so smushy and it has washed up like a dream. Um, this ridge sport base appears to be something that's kind of like whatever they can get in the Midwest, right? So it, like listed was Targi and Corydale and Merino um, cross mixes. And so I don't know exactly what the, 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 um, the alchemy of the magic of this ridge sport is, but it washed up beautifully. It's super soft um, and it drapes really nice. Um, the green is my leftover lavender loon from um, my last one that I made, my last green sweater. 
Uh, why can't I think of the name of it now right off the top of my head? I can see it. Um, anyway, um, and then this was from uh, the um, Farmer's Daughter. Um, they gave us a sport base. So the blue and the or the pink and the green came from a previous sweater. I kind of went a little off book. So if you're looking at the pattern, which is free on Ravelry, or it was at least when I grabbed it, um, it's a little different. I didn't feel like I had enough contrast between the pink and the green. And I think they were supposed to like intermix here. So I kind of, yeah, I went off book. These little bloop bloop bloops also were me going off book because I think that this was supposed to be it. <laughs> it was supposed to this rest of the sweater was supposed to be green as written. Mm -hmm. So I took some liberties. Um, it's loosely based off <laughs> Novayoski, um, and uh, there are the um, the cuffs, which is also very fun. Um, I decided because I got to here and um, it was um, <laughs> already too long, like it, it had a lot of stretch that I, um, I just did a, um, the, the color work as written for this and then did not do the ribbing. So it's just a rolled, rolled edge there, but um, super love how it turned out and just in time, hopefully for it to be too warm here to wear. <laughs> That's always my hope in the spring is I'm gonna knit this really nice warm, whatever sweater and that I will lure the weathers into being like, aha, now she cannot wear her sweater. <laughs> and then maybe now I have reverse psychology, reverse psychology, right? right. So. Uh, the only other thing I think I did differently is I did, um, I got to here and stopped, worked on the sleeves to make sure that I had enough and then came back and did the ribbing at, at the end. And so I made it longer because I had lots of, of yarn left over. Um, so I think it's supposed to kind of match the neckline here as far as the, and I'm finding I like longer ribbing on the bottom of my sweaters for whatever reason. Maybe just the way it looks. I don't know that it's necessarily a um, a fit thing. So, yes, definitely some beautiful greens and blues and Megan colors there. My husband did not ask me, like, didn't you just knit a green sweater <laughs> <laughs> on this one? Because it was blue. So there, I do knit um, different colored sweaters. Um, my next one I'm super in love with, it is a wash um, and a block and some buttons away. My Elton is finished. So I super love the stripes and um, the texture, the stripes, the speckle and the texture on this one. So I've got everything all woven in. Um, I just don't have the buttons on and it's not been blocked. The mohair, like you were kind of saying with your slub, it grows a lot. Um, so it looks a little short right now. Um, it's supposed to be boxy, right? Like the, the um, drop shoulder is supposed to, the main body is supposed to go out wide. Um, and so I think it plays with my mind when I look at it. I'm like, ah, the sleeve is way too short. But no, it's because part of your underarm is actually in the, the main sweater. Um, so this is Daenerys um, by um, Suburban Stitcher. It's her mohair silk, which is super soft and fabulous. Um, and then 716 TBD by Dexter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mentioned it to him. I was like, this is supposed to be a colorway that you named <laughs> while I was working on it. Um, I think he heard me mention TBD by Dexter in the ZKN, VKN. Um, and he was like, what were you saying my name for? And I was like, you were supposed to call me and name this colorway. Um, so yeah, gonna have to figure out whether or not I wanna pull out kind of some of the purple with the buttons or if I want them to be more um, white and kind of blend in, right? Like, do I want them to be a statement or do I want them to be um, just kind of part of the the general? Yeah, or they can be blue. Do no. you think blue? <laughs> yeah that'll work 
The only thing is, is I don't think that they, like the buttonholes don't necessarily line up with the stripes. And so I don't know oh. if that would make me feel. Yeah, draw extra attention to their placement. Yeah. Yeah. If it were the exact same color. So I need one, two, three, four, five buttons, five buttons. Um, but otherwise, I thought about if it was cool <laughs> enough in Costa Rica one of the nights, and it never was, I could probably throw this on over the top of a dress and just kind of leave it, you know, mm -hmm. open at the neck as well. Wouldn't necessarily have to, to button it up. So Julia says subtle buttons, let the yarn shine. I might be into that, but yeah. I think like far away you you see some of the speckle, but I'm just so in love with it when you get when you get close up. Just keep on every time I look at it, I see little different flecks. Like right now I'm seeing a lot of the purples. Um, but so that was it's originally written as a cardigan, um, and I converted it over to be a um, Henley. So Henleys are my jam. Um, I also did um, a, as a friend of me, um, did I already show this off? I feel like maybe we talked about it because I was enjoying striping and stripes. You definitely showed it as a whip. Okay. Um, so this I tried one's it on with the needles in it. So okay. maybe that's it. I'm like, I feel like I've already shown this off and flipped up the rim and, um, but this is leftover yak from my garden variety. This is the muscle burrow or Musselboro, um, super fun. I think for me to changing the colors and kind of progressing from one end to the other was what kept me going on it. Um, and I really enjoy that there's, the multiple styling options are definitely something that I really enjoy. This yak has got a um, kind of like almost a shine to it, right? Like it's super the jewel tones are fun and then it's yeah it just kind of glows it's a glowing girl so I made it as long as um so that I could kind of wear it slouchy or I could flip up mm -hmm. um again um thinking that maybe now I won't need it but it is cool enough out there um and then as just a project to have as I was walking, um, as we were doing all kinds of things, I took along a self-striping stain and cast on another one. Um, so this is the, I'm gonna call it because I've been watching season two of Bridgerton, Zebra. <laughs> the Zebra base um, from Freckled Whimsy in the, I pink I love you. Um, and so you can see where it kind of, it, the stripes didn't always go all the way um, around, right? Like it's not ending in the same place. It almost looks like it's pooling. So some of the zebra um, speckles, but I got about halfway and I was like, you know what? I flipped it inside out to weave in the end um, at the, at the cast on. And um, I was like, I kind of like the way it looks with the pearl bumps. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just did a little flip it um, inside out and a short row and then continued on <laughs> in stockinette. Um, but really kind of like the way the stripes look with those pearl bumps. So again, kind of giving you some styling options as far as you can wear it with, um, you can wear it with the pearl bumps out. You can flip it up and have, um, some of the stockinette showing or vice versa. Um, <laughs> I didn't have a lot of people ask me about my knitting, but I thought that they might find it kind of hysterical that I was knitting a hat and it was 93 degrees outside. <laughs> so in my mind, this hat has absorbed all of that warmth. Like mm. the yarn is like a solar panel and it absorbed all of the warmth. And it is a very warm hat. Um, and I'm super impressed that I was able to, I did not bring a scale, but I was able to eyeball mm -hmm. um, and kind of get it halfway. Yeah. Um, I think one side is actually a little shorter than the other because I did get to where I was like, ooh, I don't have enough stripes to finish. But it's close enough that like the, the, the naked eye really can't tell. And while when it's inside itself, it's not... Um, 
not one peeking out too much. I think it's I think it's the initial part was just maybe a stripe or two. Just used every last gram of it basically. I just had a little teeny tiny ball, one or two stripes I think left over. Um, so yeah, I don't know that it's going to because again it's going to be not hat weather here soon. This is going to be one of those. Megan gets on a kick and knits a ton of them things. Um, but I have made two and um, do enjoy kind of the simplicity and um, the styling options. So two oh. thumbs up for, for that pattern. Yeah. <laughs> and it works I'm, with self striping. I'm just noticing a difference in my gauge. That's all. Uh oh. Just been like, oh. can you see it? That's in the smaller and the smaller it got tighter yeah yeah because it was really short um the circumference was enough that i could use my shorter needles and just work around and i was decreasing rapidly and then i got to the point where i was magic looping and it got tight mm -hmm. i would say that that is um a universal for me as well once mm -hmm. i get into that smaller circumference and i'm magic looping it definitely tightens up I might have to try this on with the one sleeve and see if it bothers me enough to start over. Um, so yeah, and then uh, the thing that I cast on that might end up getting, um, that might end up skipping whips is my Rock Cellar Center by Zandy Peters in uh, my Lavender Loon. And I absolutely love, in Gigi's Greatest Hits, I absolutely love what the knitting on the bias is doing with this super variegated color way i'm i'm um i'm alternating so i have um two skeins of fingering knitting a sport weight <laughs> sport weight top meant to be knit with like a, a cotton some linen something blend but it's all it's all working out um so yeah i i really enjoyed making the v-back tea with that yarn yep. yeah because you same right yeah you've got the bias where it's showing the color um streaks yep you know but it it does sing in that particular pattern yeah yeah so all righty well um thank you again for your um for your patience and and letting us kind of take a break last week um i appreciate it and had a and made the most of my time away <laughs> Um, and looking forward to chatting with everybody this week um, on Zcan and Anna this weekend. And um, thanks, thanks for joining us. Yeah. Bye. Bye, Ufta. <laughs>